Good morning and thanks for joining us on Facebook Live for our latest town hall discussion. Today we are talking about the Zika virus. How concerned should Pennsylvanians be and what the Wolf administration is doing to prevent the spread of Zika, which is of particular concern for pregnant women or those planning to become pregnant. So joining us today is Health Secretary Dr. Karen Murphy, Physician General Dr. Rachel Levine, Dr. Sharon Watkins, Epidemiology Bureau Director for the Department of Health, Dr. Lauren Robinson, Deputy Secretary for Health Promotion and Disease Prevention for the Department of Health, Patrick McDonnell, Acting Secretary of the Department of Environmental Protection, and Andy Kyle, DEP's Environmental Program Manager. Welcome to you all. Thanks for being here. So today our panel is taking your questions posted from Governor Wolf's Facebook page about the Zika virus. But before we start with that, I'd like Dr. Murphy and Secretary McDonald to each give sort of a brief overview of why this topic is so important and how each of their departments are being proactive to address it. So Dr. Murphy, we'll start with you. Thank you, Megan, and thanks for having us here today. Uh, now that summer is well underway, so is mosquito season. So we have diseases that are associated with mosquitoes particularly Zika this year to, uh, to monitor. So uh, the Wolf Administration takes this threat very seriously. We have developed a plan with Secretary McDonald and the Department of Environmental Protection along with the Department of Health. Today you'll hear from the Department of Health experts in Zika. Um, we have published the, our plan on our website and your, the participants here are free to go on the website to take a look at that and to heed um, the information and the warnings that are, uh, that are on our plan. Um, the Department of Health not only is working with DEP, but um, with the Center for Disease Control. Um, we are provided with almost daily updates from the Center for Disease Control, and we will keep um, our, our information on our website current according to that. We, current, we have 36 cases reported, all of um, those who had visited affected countries. We don't have any local transmission as of yet, but we will be aggressively monitoring this throughout the season. Okay. Thank you. And Secretary McDonald. Sure, and uh, excited to be here and explain uh, the department's role in, in the Zika prevention uh, campaign. Our primary role is uh, mosquito surveillance monitoring. We've done that for many years, primarily related to West Nile virus. Mm -hmm. Uh, but now we're doing it uh, in addition for the Zika virus. There's two types of mosquitoes that can transmit the virus. One of them is, is fairly common within the state. Another we haven't seen for, for over 10 years now within the state, but we're, we are monitoring for both. There's a number of things that, that people can do to prevent uh, mosquitoes, um, and we can talk a little more about those as, as we go through, through the day. Absolutely. Thank you both. All right, well, to get started, I think we should just sort of um, go into like what is Zika virus and how is it spread? So Dr. Watkins, I'd like to start with you. If you could just give us a quick, you know, what is Zika? Sure. Uh, Zika virus is one of the viruses that is transmitted by a mosquito. Um, Pennsylvanians are familiar with this type of, uh, with a mosquito transmitted virus. We have West Nile virus here in Pennsylvania. Now, how is Zika spread is a little different than West Nile virus. Um, most transmission of Zika occurs because an infected mosquito bites, I mean, a mosquito bites an infected person and then rebites another person. However, it can also be transmitted from an infected male to a sexual partner. It can be transmitted by a pregnant woman to her baby at the time of delivery or during pregnancy. And then we also worry about blood, blood transmission during uh, blood products. And I guess also, this is an obvious, but is Zika virus dangerous? And I think, you know, for some, maybe not, but for those that are expecting, uh, it can be devastating, as we've seen in the news. Absolutely. Most Zika viruses infections are asymptomatic. So 80% of individuals who are infected have no symptoms at all. Um, and the symptoms are fairly mild. So they're things like a rash or a fever, some joint pain or a headache. However, we are concerned about pregnant women, and that's, that's where, why we're really talking today, because there are uh, birth defects that are associated with this. Uh, microcephaly, we've all heard about that in the news, but some other central nervous system defects that the child uh, could be born with. Uh, we're also concerned about a neurological disorder called Guillain-Barre syndrome, and that has been associated as well. 
Um, let's get to some Facebook questions. Um, and Sarah asks this, and I think Dr. Watkins, if you could take this one as well. With the CDC's updated map showing a low potential for Zika outbreaks in Pennsylvania, how high do you believe the risk is for Pennsylvania residents? You know, that, that's, a, that's a tough question. I, I mean, we believe that there is a low to moderate risk, but certainly not zero. And Pennsylvania does have, as Secretary Murphy said, 36 travel-associated cases. Um, and we do have a competent vector. So the risk is not zero, and we were taking all the appropriate actions we need to. Um, and does the risk vary throughout the state? The risk would vary throughout the state, and it varies by the density of uh, the vectors, which I'm sure the, our colleagues are going to talk about. It varies by the amount of travelers who are coming into that area who may be carrying the virus with them. And uh, just you know, varying by the amount of uh, standing water and the amount of time people are outside. Um, and another question from Sarah, and Dr. Robinson, if you could take this one. Um, she asks, do we really need to take precautions and change our lifestyle to avoid infection, or is the likelihood of contracting the virus so low for Pennsylvania residents that we really don't need to take extreme measures? That's a great question. So I think it's really important for people to take precautions to protect themselves against mosquitoes, not only for the Zika virus, but also because uh, we know that we have West Nile virus here. Uh, the main risk right now to Pennsylvanians is for folks who are traveling to areas that have uh, high levels of the Zika virus. Again, we do not have any local transmission in the state of Pennsylvania or in the United States at this point. Um, so it's important for people to take precautions when they're traveling um, and to wear DEET. Uh, when they're outside. So that's uh, wearing an insect repellent when you go outside, and that's something that folks should be doing pretty much anytime it's mosquito season. And so I wouldn't call those extreme measures, but it is important to protect yourself and know uh, what your risks are. And this just came in my head, but DEET is, is, has been deemed a safe repellent for pregnant yeah. women? Yes, and that's a great question. So DEET is not only safe for kind of everybody in the general public, but for pregnant women, um, for children who are playing outside, DEET is approved and is safe for people to use. Okay. Um, let's take some questions over to DEP. Um, Lauren asks, are there approved mosquito preventions uh, that are more likely to prevent Zika from spreading? Sure, and, and I think along the lines of, of the last answer, it's, it's, we, we focus on mosquito prevention generally um, uh, because that reduces the likelihood of, of Zika transmitting. So there are a lot of simple things you can do. I mean, I, th I think most people don't, aren't aware the type of mosquito we're talking about here only travels within 50 yards of its aquatic habitat. Mm -hmm. So it, it matters that, you know, it, if you see the mosquito, it's coming from your yard or your neighbor's yard. So anything you can do to reduce standing water, uh, if, if you have an ornamental pool and it's, you know, have fish in it or, or aerate it, um, uh, you know, make sure you address that. Um, even things, you know, I have kids, you leave out the kids' toys, it collects a little rainwater in it. That can be, that can be a place that, that water collects. So it's, making sure that you're reducing the, those kinds of uh, opportunities for the mosquitoes to breed and thrive. Okay. Um, what about like spraying your yard? Is that, a, is that something you can do or do you recommend that? Um, you, you can use uh, EPA approved uh, inse insecticides. We, we make, sure, make sure you're following all the instructions mm -hmm. on, on, on uh, the labels. Uh, read uh, any warnings uh, on those labels, but uh, there's a number of products that are available uh, at local hardware stores and other places that, that can help address. But avoiding that standing water is probably the biggest one. Okay. You avoid the problem entirely if you get rid of the standing water. Okay. And then um, David asks, is it possible to test for Zika in mosquitoes or in animals such as birds as the state does with West Nile? If so, is the state doing that? Um, I'll, I'll turn it over to uh, Andy Kyle to answer part of that in a minute, but the, the, the key part is the difference between West Nile and Zika is uh, the mosquitoes get, get the West Nile virus from birds uh, and then transmit it to humans. Here you're talking about Zika being in humans mosquito getting it from human and then another human, you know, another human getting it from that mosquito as, as the vector. So right now what we're testing for is just the presence of a mosquito that could be a Zika carrying mosquito. Uh, we're not at this point testing for Zika itself in the mosquitoes. But Andy, I don't know if you want to add. Um, no, you've said pretty much what we need to say. Um, we will be testing the mosquitoes in our lab uh, for Zika. 
Um, we won't be testing any birds or any of the other animals that was mentioned in the, uh, in the question, so. Um, Dr. Levine, we have a question from Linda Marie. She says, would you recommend that every woman who is thinking about trying to conceive undergo a screening test to determine if they've been exposed to Zika prior to getting pregnant? Thank you for that question. Uh, no, we would not recommend that women who are um, thinking about getting pregnant get screened uh, for the Zika virus. Really, most women in Pennsylvania uh, will not have been exposed uh, to this virus. And the current tests are really only appropriate uh, for recent exposure. Um, if you have traveled, however, to an area with ongoing Zika transmission, we do recommend that you talk with your health care provider and consider postponing pregnancy for at least, at least eight weeks after travel. Okay. And then following up also from Linda Marie, if a woman has been exposed to Zika before pregnancy, how long is the virus active in the body? I think you sort of just addressed that, but what, what is the recommended length of time to wait before trying to conceive? Okay, sure. So. Well, the current evidence that states that people would have the virus for around seven to 10 days um, uh, if, if they contract it. Um, and women should wait at least eight weeks from exposure time, for instance, if they travel to a Zika-affected area before trying to get pregnant. It's also important to remember that Zika can be sexually transmitted. So if their partner has traveled to a Zika area transmission and then had symptoms, actually they should wait for at least six months before trying to get pregnant. Okay. Um, also from Linda Murray and Dr. Robertson, if you could um, address this one. She says, do we know anything about with regard to becoming pregnant after exposure to Zika virus? And does the body create antibodies that prevent reinfection? That's a great question. So based on the available scientific information we have uh, up to today, um, we think that as a uh, woman gets exposed to the virus, her body mounts a response um, and she recovers, she gets better. Um, like with other viruses, she will develop some type of immune response so that if she gets exposed in the future, she wouldn't get as sick or wouldn't have symptoms. We don't know if these are antibodies, we're not really sure what this means. And, and I think a, a follow-up question, we don't know what that means going forward. So a woman could have the Zika virus, get better and feel completely fine, but we don't know today what that means for her future pregnancies. Okay. And then one more. Um, she, Linda asks, in essence, if a woman becomes pregnant after contracting the virus and recovering from it, can she contract the virus again during her pregnancy or even after her pregnancy, putting her unborn baby at risk? So she could contact the virus again. We wouldn't know what her response to that virus would be or, or her response to the Zika virus would be at that time. And we wouldn't know what her risk would be to her unborn baby. I think this, this is all information that will be forthcoming and that folks should definitely um, get the latest information from the Pennsylvania Department of Health website. And the CDC is really good about uh, providing updates about the Zika virus as they come to know this information. And I think like your, phys your, your physician is, is staying in touch with the CDC as well. Mm -hmm. So if you have those questions, mm -hmm. right, yes. you can go and ask them. Yes as well. Okay. Um, and then, okay, so this is one that's on, I think, a lot of people's mind with the Summer Olympics coming up. Um, Emily Rose asks, what does the uh, Department of Health and the Department of Environmental Protection think of Pennsylvania residents traveling to Rio for the Olympics due to the overwhelming number of Zika outbreaks that are originating in Brazil? Dr. Murphy? So the CDC's recommendation uh, recommendations include pregnant women should not go to the Olympics. Um, so those that are already pregnant. Um, we are also encouraging anyone who is attending uh, the Olympics to exercise the, caution, the precautions that we've spelled out here today because we think it's very important. Um, you know, I remind everyone that this is a relatively new disease, that we're, we're finding out new information about it on a daily basis. And um, I think our advice is precaution. Um, and, and particularly in those that are planning to have children, both male and, uh, and female. Mm -hmm. Do you have any, does the EP have a, a thought on that, on the Olympics? <laughs> no, I mean, that, that's one we definitely defer to our colleagues at yeah. the Department of Health. <laughs> Um, we have a little bit of extra time here. I mean, what, what haven't our Facebook viewers asked that you think is important to get out uh, to Pennsylvanians regarding Zika? I think they, it, it's very important to understand the, the county health departments um, across the Commonwealth and municipal, county, uh, municipal health departments are also working on Zika prevention. Um, the Department of Health um, is preparing to, to um, 
supply some areas with Zika kits for those that um, may not have those available to prevent um, as a preventative um, as a preventative measure. And we will continue uh, the biggest um, initiative we have right now is education. Uh, we have we launched airport sign signage um, so those coming in from the affected countries would understand what the implications are. And we will continue to educate um, our 12 million uh, Pennsylvanians so that um, we can we can hopefully prevent the disease from uh, spreading. I think it's also, you mentioned it, important to emphasize for people to keep in contact if they have questions with mm -hmm. their health care providers, with their physicians or other health care providers. Um, the Department of Health has put out numerous health alerts uh, to, to the medical providers in the state. Um, also, I know that the American College of OBGYN um, have had weekly alerts to their, to their members because obstetrician gynecologists are obviously the health care providers that would need to stay informed. So um, uh, we've been in contact in other um, health Healthcare authorities have been in contact with their physicians and healthcare providers. So, if you have a question, in addition to coming to our website or the CD, CDC website, contact your healthcare provider for information. Okay. Anything? Else? I mean, I would add on that note that um, individuals who have concerns should definitely get in touch with their healthcare provider sooner than later because testing for the virus <laughs> has a limited window, mm -hmm. and you want to catch, you know, catch it in that window. So, it's important that they immediately seek their physician's advice. Can we talk about testing too? I mean, who gets tested? If, so I think the CDC says if you've traveled and then you're pregnant and you think you were exposed, is that correct? You're able to get, the, not everybody can get the test. Um, it, it's a very complicated algorithm. Okay. But uh, <laughs> so to keep it a little simple, I mean, if you've traveled or um, if, you've, if you're pregnant and you've traveled, uh, you should be tested. Okay. If you're pregnant and you have uh, a partner who has traveled who is symptomatic, you should be tested. And um, all others, there are some decision marks that, that we go through, and we have an algorithm that will be ha is on our website, and we are updating that. So, so who, who then, like, is it that you would see your primary care yes. or your OBGYN, mm -hmm. and they would decide to order a mm -hmm. test if yes. need be? Okay. and many times they're consulting with the Department of Health to walk through what test, you know, what test should be ordered when and what's appropriate. Got it. Okay. Anything else? Yeah? Yeah. Um, what's the summer look like <laughs> for TEP? <laughs> Hot, right? Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, uh, can't stress enough again from, from the standpoint of mosquitoes for a variety of reasons, Zika being one, the prevention element, re reduction of standing water. The other things we, we say are if you need to be outside where um, try to cover as much skin as possible, which I know can be a challenge in the heat, but uh, loose, light, you know, light clothing. Um, uh, use EPA-approved insect repellents uh, to, to try to prevent uh, uh, mosquitoes from biting. And then in, even inside the house, remember, if you have a hole in your screen, that's a pathway for a mosquito to get into your house. So make sure you're repairing screens. Use air conditioning because they like the heat. They like being outside. So. Um, uh, using air conditioning in, in your home can, can help reduce. So anything you can do to both prevent uh, uh, mosquitoes from breeding but then pr prevent the bites uh, is what we focus on. Can you talk a little bit more for those who are just tuning in? Um, also, you mentioned earlier in our panel about the, the mosquitoes, this specific type of mosquito that carries the virus doesn't go outside of a 50 Sure. Mile radius? Sure. So, okay. it, it, or, no, uh, 50 yard. 50 yard. Okay. 50 yard radius <laughs> from its aquatic habitat. Okay. So, they breed within uh, standing water, uh, which is why it's important to aerate a pond or, you know, if you have tarps, toys, whatever outside that's collecting water, um, that you're getting rid of that. Um, but once they breed, I mean, the, they exist, their, their entire life, they exist within 50 yards of uh, where they came from in terms of that Asian tiger. Uh, mosquito, which is the one we're concerned about uh, within the state. So if, if you're seeing the mosquito, chances are it came from your yard or, or a neighbor's yard. It's, it's not something that's coming from half a mile, a quarter mile down the street. Is there a concern moving forward, and this is probably on the national level, but if somebody is infected and then um, it, it, it comes from a different country and then is, is bit 
by a mosquito here, because there are some states that have those mosquitoes, correct? The, 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 the carrier of the... So there are, yeah. there are two mosquitoes that are primarily involved. One is um, sometimes called the yellow fever mosquito. Mm -hmm. That would be, as the Secretary mentioned, extremely unusual in Pennsylvania. It has not been seen since the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. The other is the um, Asian tiger mosquito, um, has a fancier scientific name. And we do see that mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania every year. And um, the EP is, is finding that, as we would expect, in Pennsylvania now. You, you outlined exactly the concern. If someone was from another country, uh, came from the South America or Central America or Caribbean and actually has the virus and the mosquito bites them and then bites somebody else, that would be how it's transmitted. So that really is the basis of all of our precautions is that we want people who've traveled from another country um, in like Central, Central and South America to, to take a lot of mosquito precautions when mm -hmm. they come back. And we want everyone to take the precautions that have outlined to prevent that, um, that transmission by those mosquito bites. And that hasn't happened that in has Pennsylvania not happened anywhere or anywhere in the continental in the United States. Okay. But that's the concern and that's what the prevention is all about. That's correct. Okay. It's very it's complicated. complicated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, any closing um, just remarks about... Um, Pennsylvania and what our administration is doing to, you know, kind of keep our finger on the pulse of all of this, just kind of reiterating uh, what each department is doing. So the Department of Health is, we ha are addressing the Zika virus on a daily basis in Pennsylvania. Um, we develop the collaboration with DEP. We have continual contact with DEP to review what is the current status and what are our plans. Um, the Wolf Administration began to uh, plan for uh, Zika back in January. Um, we've held exercises that we are preparing if should there be an outbreak of several individuals, several different departments. So um, the Department of Health and the Department of Environmental Protection um, and the Wolf Administration are um, covering this, um, this virus and what it means to Pennsylvania on a daily basis. No, I, I think that's exactly right. I mean, as, as was mentioned earlier, we developed the Zika uh, plan uh, for response uh, in collaboration uh, with Department of Health. Uh, I think that lays out appropriate steps for both departments to take, depending on what we're actually seeing on the ground in terms of uh, where we're finding the virus, how much we're finding, uh, where we're finding mosquitoes, how many mosquitoes we're, we're finding. So as, as information changes, the response will change. Uh, but we've developed a, an appropriate level of response uh, and appropriate steps to, to go through um, as the situation changes. But uh, yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. Anything, Andy? Anything to add? No. <laughs> um, okay, well, I, unless anyone else has anything else that we, I think we covered it. Mm -hmm. we, got it we, we got it done quickly, too. Um, thank you all so much for being thank here you. today. I really appreciate it. And I think that our Facebook viewers um, also greatly appreciate the information. Um, so we just want to make sure that you know that Governor Wolf is on Facebook and, as well as Twitter. And uh, to continue uh, receiving information on the Zika plan here in Pennsylvania and prevention, uh, please continue to uh, tune in to his uh, social media feeds as well as, again, Department of Health has a whole host of information on their website. Uh, thanks so much for joining us.